At this time, please stand for the presentation of the American flag and for the singing of our national anthem. The national anthem will be sung by Grammy Award winning Halloran Hilton Hill singer-songwriter for Whitney Houston, Take Six, Bishop, T.D. Jakes. Halloran's been in the radio business for over 20 years. He's married to wife Deidre and has two children, Halloran Two, which is his birthday today, 21st birthday today, and Hallie Nicole. Please welcome Halloran Hilton Hill. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free And the home of the brave. Thank you, Halloran. Great American. Now we'd like to present the flags from every branch of the military, starting with the United States Army.
the United States Coast Guard. Now, ladies and gentlemen, honoring all those missing in action and those prisoners of war, may we never forget. Honor Guard! This time I'd like to introduce our speaker. He is one of Campbell County's hometown heroes. He is U.S. Army retired Lieutenant Colonel E.L. Morton. Colonel Morton is, all, is also command our Chamber in Commerce as Chief Director. And he has a big heart and motivation to inspire all who is around him. Ladies and gentlemen, please make him welcome here this morning, Lieutenant Colonel E.L. Morton. American veterans, servicemen and women, friends and officials, good morning. Thank you, Kevin, for that kind introduction. We're here today because our veterans sacrificed to build something on our nation's God-given blessings. In 1918, World War I ended on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. It was the end of the war to end all wars, and Americans recognized the lives and personal sacrifices given to preserve freedom against tyranny in Europe at that specific time. Today, as imperfect humans, we remain a country resolved to do the very best we can to love our fellow man. But in this imperfect state, we must reckon with the inability to love perfectly, resulting in painful wars and conflicts. Even now, we grapple with a human imperfection in knowing that one of our own in uniform has turned on our own troops at Fort Hood. I cannot explain it and join you in mourning the passing of some of our very best brothers and sisters in arms. And while the urge is strong to look to those who look most like the gunmen and to assign blame, I have to recall the story my mother told me about my grandparents' neighbors in 1941 and I pray for a, an outcome we would all want uh, for the problems we face today. Some of you know that my mom is Hawaiian. It so happens my grandfather, Lawrence K. K. Olanui, was a ship worker at Pearl Harbor. And they lived above the harbor in Pearl City. And yes, they witnessed that December 7th Sunday morning attack on sailors, soldiers, Marines, airmen, civilians, and our fleet. As the zeros and bombers pounded our harbor, my grandparents' next door neighbor came out in her front yard and lay face down and wept in shame. Her name was Kuroda, from a first generation Japanese immigrant family. Our nation's reaction was strong against Japanese Americans and we still wonder how to reconcile with the perceived threats and fear of the unknown. 
A year ago last summer, my wife Elaine, our sons and I joined my mom and dad in a visit to the islands. We stayed in an army lodge and across the street was a military parade ground named Corota Field. Named for Robert Corota, one of Mrs. Corota's five sons, each killed in combat service to the United States in the 442nd Infantry Regiment in Italy. Robert was awarded the Medal of Honor. I pray we effectively honor those lost at Fort Hood and bring justice to those families. I pray we effectively separate the terrorist criminals from the people who love this country. It will not be an easy problem to solve and will require our utmost in resolve. But today, while our nation is no exception to the wars of the world, we must acknowledge an exceptional people like Robert Corota, and those are our Campbell County veterans today. Born of a necessity for freedom, tempered in battle from Yorktown and Chickamauga to Pearl Harbor, Omaha Beach and Guadalcanal to LZ X-Ray and Quezon to the Euphrates River and Mogadishu, our veterans took action in the face of fear and clear threat of death, and by their actions they have ensured a way of life, one that we love. They ensure it today in Baghdad, in the Hindu Kush Mountains, and desert plains of Kandahar, Afghanistan. Their sacrifice has created debt that cannot be repaid, and they know it and do it gladly still. We cannot understand every nuance of these sacrifices, but we clearly understand today to the extent that we offer our most heartfelt thank you to these valorous men and women. My soldier's story began in this courthouse in 1983 when I enlisted in the 1176 Petroleum Supply Company, Jacksboro, Tennessee, Tennessee Army National Guard. Like some of you, I followed my father into service. But on that day, my dad, Robert Morton, became my platoon sergeant. And now my name was Private Morton on top of being his boy. So I requested a transfer to Clinton. <laughs> Truthfully, my dad is the best soldier, Marine, commissioned, warrant, and non-commissioned officer I ever knew. Yep, he's held all those titles and served them all well. And then there's my father-in-law, Estel Jones, who inspired me as I learned of his contributions fighting the 13th U.S. Army Air Force from island to island throughout the Philippines in 1943 and 1944. I've heard firsthand local accounts from those who defended fire bases in Vietnam overrun by Viet Cong and stood and won the fight to get them back. If you had time to listen to the morning's broadcast today, you heard many more stories of local heroes among us. These examples are precisely the reason I knew I wanted to serve my small part in this great experiment we call America. I even worked for a general named Steiner one time in a paratrooper outfit. And let me assure you, the standards were high and he had us war ready when we deployed to Desert Shield and Desert Storm. My wife Elaine and I have worked together on a 21 year course through long separations, combat tours in Iraq and Afghanistan, 14 households and three wonderful sons. Through it all, we've been blessed and blessed to know the most wonderful people, veterans, their families and friends. I salute you today, our veterans, our crack honor guard and veteran services team. I'm gonna leave you with an article, a bit lengthy, but it's about a veteran that will make you very proud. For those of you who are non-golfers, David Faraday is an irreverent TV golf analyst. An Irishman and former tour professional, he has a whimsical and often sarcastic view of the world and of professional golf. This article is particularly good. I don't know where we get these kids, but God bless them and thank God they're on our side, so enjoy it. Soldiering on, the Troops First Foundation gives America's injured vets a chance to reclaim their dignity by David Faraday, Golf Magazine, August 26, 2009. The final round of Tiger Woods AT&T National in July was particularly satisfying for me to witness because I followed the Tiger toward his one-shot victory over Hunter Mahon, who had earlier posted an incredible 62. Hunter had supported my Troops First, or F Troop Foundation, events since the beginning, and like Tiger, his dad served in the military. Earlier that week, PGA pros like Tom Watson played with 30 or so seriously injured servicemen and women, most of them amputees. In my second annual Improvised Explosive Day of Golf tournament, 
This year, I had another amazing group of warriors from Rob Brown, a below-the-knee amputee who may represent the U.S. in both the regular Olympics in kayak and para-Olympics in track and field. And then there was a 22-year-old PFC Brendan Morocco of the 25th Infantry Division who on Easter Sunday, Sunday in Tikrit was robbed of all four limbs plus his left eye. It takes a while to figure out how to react to the severely injured warriors, but after almost three years of being around them, I think I figured it out. This year was the first time I'd met Brendan, with whom it's impossible to shake hands, play footsie, chest bump, or for that matter, pull his finger. A stump to knuckles thing had to suffice, and after that I embarked on what is now my normal procedure, forgetting to know a new member of my F troop, who was being driven around in a cart by his brother Mike. It went something like this. You know, you're not as tall as I thought you'd be, Brendan retorted, I used to be taller. Yes, I can imagine. So what would you like to do today? Brendan said, I'd like to kick your blankety blank blank. <laughs> well, I retorted, well, that seems unlikely. Obviously, you can't walk, but you look like you bounce pretty well. Are you okay to be in a cart today without a seat belt? Brendan retorted, yeah, I can hold on with my butt cheeks. I said, well, excellent. Clinch on, brother. I'll see you out there. Later that morning, I saw him and said, hey, Stumpy, how's it going? Brendan said, I like this. Is there any chance I can go watch Tiger with you this week? I said, I'll get you inside the ropes if I have to wear you like a floppy hat. Brendan said, man, that's cold. He said, hey, get used to it, kid. You're an F trooper now. These exchanges usually horrify first-time witnesses, but after a few moments, everyone gets it. Brendan had lost his limbs, not his mind, but more important for a man who's been trained to be one of the best uh, soldiers on the planet, he had lost his dignity. By his reactions to my seemingly callous assaults, on what was left of him, Brendan regains a little of that dignity each time. Brendan, like the rest of the F Troop men and women, is more courageous, more inspiring, more complete and funnier than any able-bodied person I know. His intelligence and his sense of humor are the only weapons he has left to defend himself, and he will use them in a manner that leaves those of us who are lucky enough to have him and others like him defending our freedom utterly awestruck and humbled. Tiger had a one-shot lead after the 17th hole and he stood waiting for Anthony Kim to putt out. As he stood, I put my hand on his shoulder and told him that Brendan, who had followed him all day in a cart inside the ropes, was now in his wheelchair where Tiger would make the turn and corner to go to the 18th tee. Tiger smiled at me and nodded. Before heading to the last tee, Tiger hunkered down and knuckle stumped one of his heroes, PFC Brendan Morocco. Brendan, who before that day had been ashamed and frightened to go out in public, was wheeled by his father Alex and his brother Mike down the center of the 18th fairway to an overwhelming, roaring, standing ovation. He lifted what is left of one of his arms in a salute, and this announcer wept like Tiger, wept as Tiger looked on in the background smiling. It's hard to know which boy the old Green Beret Earl Woods would have been more proud of at that moment, but I do know this. Because of Tiger Woods, Hunter Mahon, and the Troops First Foundation, and Campbell County because of efforts like this today and the ones that you carry out in our daily lives. They have dignity. PFC Brendan Morocco is no longer ashamed to go out in public, and by this winter he will be hunting birds with us and pulling his own trigger, or I'll make the little swine drop and give me 20. Only a fool would bet against him being able to do both. Like they say, they're strong, and then there's Army strong. May God bless all of you and have a blessed Veterans Day. Thank you, Colonel Morton. At this time, we'd like to honor all of our veterans at this time. Veterans, please stand, raise your hand, and be recognized. Look around, look around at our nation's heroes right now. <laughs> Officer today, salute our comrades here. I'd like to know if there's anybody other than uh, Charlie Russ Martin, who is a POW, World War II POW, uh, any other POWs in our midst. I'd like to recognize him, POW. Appreciate your service, sir.
All World War II, raise your hand if you would. All World War II veterans, raise your hand, look around. All Korean War vets, raise your hand. Korean War. All Vietnam War. Vietnam. The Gulf. Gulf War vets. The Iraq and Global War on Terrorism. Veterans. All peacetime veterans. Any, anybody that I didn't mention but served in peacetime. Appreciate your service. Any active duty who we have active duty right now on active duty. Raise your hand. Be recognized. All right. Now, at this time, we'd like to have the Campbell County Honor Guard present a wreath at our memorial. This time we'd like to salute our fallen comrades with a 21-gun salute. This is the highest honor that we can bestow upon a veteran. After the 21-gun salute, you'll hear the sound of taps. Taps is played on every major military installation at the end of the day to signify a time of rest. Officer of the day, salute our departed comrades. Want to draw your attention to the American flag before this podium here. The American flag is folded 13 times. The first fold of our flag is a symbol of life. The second fold is a symbol of our belief in eternal life. The third fold is made in honor and remembrance of the veterans departing our ranks who gave a portion of their lives for the defense of our country to attain peace throughout the world. The fourth fold represents our weaker nature 
For as American citizen, trusting in God is him we turn in times of peace as well as in times of war for his divine guidance. The fifth fold is a tribute to our country. For in the words of Stephen Decatur, our country in dealing with other countries, may she always be right, but is still our country right or wrong. The sixth fold is for where our hearts lie. It is with our hearts that we pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The seventh fold is a tribute to our armed forces, for it's through the armed forces that we protect our country and our flag against all her enemies, whether they be found within or without the boundaries of our republic. The eighth fold is a tribute to the one who entered into the valley of the shadow of death, that we might see the light of day and to honor mother for whom it flies on Mother's Day. The ninth fold is a tribute to womanhood, for it has been through their faith, their love, loyalty, and devotion that the character of the men and women who have made this country great has been molded. The tenth fold is a tribute to the Father, for he too has given his sons and daughters for the defense of our country since they were first born. The eleventh fold in the eyes of a Hebrew citizen represents the lower portion of the seal of King David and King Solomon and glorifies in their eyes God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The twelfth fold in the eyes of a Christian citizen represents an emblem of eternity and glorifies in their eyes God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. The thirteenth fold is a reminder to all of us of the sacrifice, suffering, and bloodshed by those of the original thirteen colonies who never gave up hope nor courage for the day that they would be from the yoke of tyranny upon them from their mother country. The flag is now completely folded with the stars uppermost reminding us of our nation's motto, In God We Trust. After it's tucked in, it takes on the appearance of a cocked hat, ever reminding us of those soldiers who served under General George Washington and the sailors and Marines who served under Captain John Paul Jones who were followed by their comrades and shipmates in the armed forces of the United States, preserving for us the rights, the privileges, and the freedoms that we enjoy today. At this time, we'll have a song by the lovely Carol McDonald. Christ was born. 
Thank you. Thank you, Miss McDonald. That was lovely. Give her another good hand clap. Amen. His truth is marching on. At this time, we'd like to have uh, Chief Petty Officer Leroy Morgan come and talk to you about the Campbell County Memorial Committee. He is our chairman. Thank you, Kevin. Just a few quick words. I had uh, promised some people that we would have some bricks on the wall by Veterans Day, but as far as lead time and weather and everything, it just wasn't possible. So we will have another bunch of bricks on the wall by Memorial Day, and if y'all would, please help us get these bricks sold. Uh, I don't know if I've said this before or not or if anybody's mentioned it. You don't have to be a veteran of Campbell County. You don't have to be from Campbell County. As long as you are honorably discharged from any branch of service, you can get a brick for this wall, all right? And one last thing, it is said that no love, let me remember, no greater love has a man that he would give, to give his life for a friend. And the names on this wall here, they all gave their lives. Just remember that. Y'all have a good day and thank you for being here. Before we have uh, Brother Ovid Bolton come, uh, we have Mr. Lynch, is that right? And he wants to come and uh, say a word. Uh, he's a World War II veteran, uh, fought in fa uh, France. He's a Purple Heart combat wounded, and he'd like to share a word with you. I'm so glad to be here today. And I'm so thankful that I've done what I've done for my country. I've been operated on about six different times. And in Martain, I've done some of the men, a captain, done some of the greatest honors that was done during World War II. And Martain, the Germans had my CP, or my first sergeant, and then was surrounded. They had all of the boys but the first sergeant to pull their clothes off. And when they pulled their clothes off, they killed them. Every one of them but the first sergeant. Then they got outside and tried to get where I was at on the roadblock with the cannons and the, and the tank guns. But I took with one with a machine gun and those three jeeps that they had the words of trying to get to where I was at on the roadblock, they didn't get there. I can show you the pictures of the jeeps at my place at Davis Chapel. They said that some of the greatest things was done during World War II, what I've done, that's on that roadblock. They were 60-some-odd vehicles, tanks and all, that was laying around different, different places. We had to get them out of the road, out of the way, to where that roadblock was at. They said that that was one of the greatest things that was done during World War II. And what we've done on the roadblock, Patman would have been a surrounded, pinned off on the side. 
So I'm so glad. Amen. I'm so glad that I'm here with you today. I love it, this country. Amen. Thank you, sir. I love this country. I was born in Union County in 1920. If I live to the 26th of December, I'll be with them 89 years. I, not many and Lord Huggins knows this now. There's not many cemeteries in Campbell County that I help, haven't helped hold a military funeral. Lord Huggins knows that. And I'm so glad that I've done what I've done for my country. And I've been here almost 89 years. Appreciate your service, sir. Appreciate your service, sir. Thank you, sir. Now we'd like to close in prayer. Reverend uh, Ovid Bolton, please come. Before we pray, I'd like to thank everybody that come this way today. And it's good to be amongst back. It's good to be with that. You know, I just thank God that I got a chance to serve the country that I love so well. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come to you, we just thank you, Lord, for this beautiful Veterans Day, Lord. We thank you for everyone that come this way today, Lord. We ask you to be with them today, Lord, and watch over them. And Lord, we ask you to watch over our men in uniform, Lord, especially them that's in harm's way today, Lord. And God, just take care of them. Lord, do we know that you're the only one that can, Lord. We just ask you again, Lord, to take care of them. We thank you again, Lord, for this day and all these veterans gathered here today, Lord. Thank you for everything that's been done here today, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. And God bless you all.